So the Bureau XCOM Declassified is the origin story uh, set in 1962 uh, North America, essentially setting the tone for uh, the nexus, that flashpoint where XCOM comes into being. Uh, and this all starts from a very clandestine group formed by JFK and his group of CIA agents uh, formed the Bureau, uh, but very quickly based on an alien invasion, uh, they realign themselves uh, and take on an alien threat head on in North America. Well, every other XCOM game out there has been set in the near future, whether that was 1999 of the original game or sometime after 2013 for Enemy Unknown. For our game, we decided to take a look in the past, to go back to tell a story that hadn't been told yet in the XCOM universe, which was what series of events could have happened to make an organization like the full-fledged XCOM that we all know and love even possible. The things that we feel that really differentiate the product start with the tone and the setting, right? Like we've got this really rich and unique, uh, you know, juxtaposition of the sort of the 1960s as we know it versus the current interpretation of modern technology and alien threat. You don't see a lot of that when you refer to old 50s movies. Usually you see UFOs hanging on a string. You're coming off of this decade of the 50s where your average guy could like work 40 hours a week and have you know, two cars and a nice house. And so there was this uh, feeling that nobody wanted any disruption in their lives. So. What is really cool to me is the fact that you can really, you know, imagine in the 60s that there is a bureau and that there was a bureau of some sort uh, in that time period that was uh, under the radar, completely unknown to the public uh, with similar goals to what we're communicating through XCOM, but just in a different light. Well, over the course of development, we started in first person and then we kept iterating towards trying to make sure that the parts of the game that were working were working better and better and the parts of the game that weren't working we were willing to change. It was really a journey from that first person view of the game that we showed in 2010 to the first third person hybrid that we showed in 2011 where you can see the beginnings of what we're calling battle focus mode now. But it was it was very it was a little different too. It was still we were still trying to get that feeling of teamwork, the feeling that the player could really have to be responsible. We could hold the player are responsible for the decisions that they made for their team and if they make a mistake and lose one of their agents they would have to deal with the consequences of that. The integration of permadeath, right, the seriousness of your consequences and your actions on how that can actually impact your gaming experience for not just for the moment but for a long duration of time. And I think that it's been a powerful tool for us as we're sort of uh, engineering and designing levels as well as uh, providing a real motivation to the player for utilizing the tactics and tool sets that we make available. You want the player to feel that the game is treating them fairly uh, and not cheating them in the event that they lose a character because of poor design decisions. So we, when you introduce something like permadeath, it affects everything from the way that you engineer your levels, the way that you introduce uh, characters, and to, you constantly have to be cognizant of where the player is in terms of their leveling and skill set at that particular time. XCOM is a game that requires skill. It requires a player to bring their absolute, you know, they're going to be outnumbered on the battlefield. They're, the tech that the outsiders bring is going to be far superior to anything that your team has ever seen until you, of course, take it and use it against them. And our game really requires people to bring not just their, not just their twitch, but their skill, their ability to plan for a team, their ability to use tactics, the ability to take any advantage possible on the battlefield. And we think that that is a core value of the XCOM franchise in general, just having an extremely difficult game that it requires everything you've got to succeed in. And even when you give it everything you've got, sometimes you still have setbacks.